Hey everyone, so in the previous video, we took a look at how the built-in shapes and shape generators are very versatile, that they have lots of settings, and that in some cases you can essentially turn one shape into an entirely different shape just by using the built-in settings. But sometimes you're going to want to do something fairly different that those settings do not account for. For instance, you may basically want one shape to be carved out of another. For those of you who you've used 3D Builder or who have watched my tutorial, 3D Builder had a tool called Subtract. And what you do is you'd click on one of the objects in the scene, you hit Subtract, that object would be deleted, and then any portion of any other object that was overlapping, that portion would be deleted. So basically you'd use one object to carve out of another. Now, that doesn't quite exist in that form in Tinkercad. Instead, what you do is it's a combination of two functions and unlike 3D Builder, it is completely reversible. So it's technically not a tool, it's just a combination of two functions. So let's take a look at that. So say you have a box. I'll we'll put a box here. Say we have a sphere. And let's just increase the step so it's a little bit cleaner. Say what you want is an indentation, a round indentation in this. So what you can do you can take this sphere, and depending how deep you want it to be, you could either shrink this, or you can leave it like that. It looks to be fairly, let's shrink it a tiny bit. I can say it looks fairly centered. You can tell by, whenever you change something, like when you scale, it'll show you the scales for each axis. Same thing if you're changing the position, it'll show you like one and one, so, it's showing you the position. Doesn't matter, doesn't have to be exact. This is really just demonstrating the tool. Well, again, the, the, the combination of, of, of functions. So what we do, the object that you want to be removed from the scene and carved out of the other object, that object that's gonna be the template, you click on hold. So when it's selected, you click on hold, and then you click on the other, uh, excuse me, you shift click on the other object. Because typical Windows shift click means you are clicking on multiple, you're selecting multiple objects. So this was already selected, shift click adds this as a selection. And now you'll see the group function available up here. You click on that and there you go. You've effectively carved through the top of it. And again, wasn't centered, but I'm not too worried about that. And so just like that, you've carved one object from another. but Again, unlike 3D Builder, this is reversible. If I ungroup, it's back. And so what I can do is I can take that sphere and maybe scale it a little bit more in that direction. And then we do it again. We shift click to make sure we've got both objects selected. And then again, we click on group. And there you go. So that's one example. And like I said, it, you, you can save this and come back. That sphere is still there. It's being calculated in real time. So now maybe you want something to be hollow. So let's take this. Oh, let's put it in the middle here. So maybe you want to turn this into like a shoot or something like that. So we can rotate this. And again, the screen shows you right on it the number of degrees. So whatever tool you're using, it shows you the corresponding measures. So 180. And let's just lengthen this a little bit. Now, in the case of this one, we use two entirely different objects. But in this case, I really want the curvature to match or at least be very similar to the shape itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this object. So up here, you're going to click on duplicate, and then you can just scale this in. So we'll scale this in one notch on that side, one notch on that side, raise it up a bit, and then scale it out this way to make sure it truly carves through. And again, it's going to be the same process. The object that you want to be removed, you click on hole, then you shift click on the object that you want it to be removed from, and then you click on group, and there you go. You have a shoot or a half pipe or whatever. 
whatever you want to use it for. Now it's possible that these shapes already exist because there's quite a few shapes, but again, I'm trying to show you how to do this on your own. So A, you don't have to go looking for them, or for some reason they're lost, they go away, people delete them. I'm not sure how persistent this library is. I don't know if once it's uploaded, it's there forever. But um, so we'll do that one. So now you could do this with text as well because text is also just a shape. So say you want to have like a name engraved. So we'll take again a square, but this time we'll flatten it. And we'll stretch this out. And now we take text and then we'll type But just type design. You could change the font, sans. Again, you can change the height. We talked about this last time. You can change the bevel, segments. Not sure if you'd really want to do the bevel of the segments when you're doing like an imprint, but we did anyways. So now we can just scale this down. And that looks just about right. I can stretch that a tiny bit. And this is actually looking a little bit squashed. Okay. All right, so now we want to make sure that it's overlapping. So we can lift this Oops, sorry. Control Z. Uh, that's the one that I wanted. So we want to make sure that we're not going too deep, though. We don't want it to go through the bottom. So how does that look? Yeah, it's flickering. We'll raise this up a little bit. Okay. So, again, the words are selected, or the letters, I should say, are selected. You change it to whole, and it's kind of hard to tell in this preview. And then you just shift click the tag, and then you do group. And it is indeed carved a little. Let's, uh, let's ungroup that and. Let's actually let's see if changing color makes this easier. Oops. There were bolts still selected. So change that to blue. There we go. And what we can do is rather than struggling, we can just always make this thicker. Okay. And then we can. Sorry. There we go. Just make that thicker. And now, so we again click on design, we change it to whole, we shift click on the tag, and then we click on group. And there we go, much better. So now you've got a good clear imprint. And let's do just one more. So say you want to turn something into a frame. We know that you can do this with some of the built-in tools, but we'll just make one mainly. So we'll take the roof. Okay. So this is going to be similar to the second example where we want a duplicate of this, but we want to shrink it. So we'll go into duplicate and then we will Shrink it. Expand it. Expand it. And 
let's shrink this vertically. Oops, didn't mean to pull it towards us. Let's shrink it vertically again. There we go. Okay, so the one in the center is the one that should be selected. That you'll click on hole, shift click on the outside, and then you click on group. And there you go. Okay, so I think that should do it for this tutorial. I certainly don't want to waste anyone's time. I think you get the idea. And uh, really, that's about it. So if there's any other features you want to see, just let me know, and I'll do a tutorial on it. I'm kind of learning this as I go as well because it's fairly new to me. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that this is what I'll be covering instead of 3D Builder. 3D Builder, to the best of my knowledge, is not being actively developed. I think this still is. I see certain things that refer to it as beta, so I presume that means it's still being worked on. But even if it isn't, uh, it is way more feature complete than 3D Builder as far as the fact that so many objects have so many different settings uh, and the fact that you do have this comparable functionality that 3D Builder had because it basically had two tools that were really important. It had subtract, which I've just demonstrated, and then it had another one called split, and I'll do a separate tutorial that shows you how to do that. But effectively, it's it's very similar. The two, the two tools worked very similar as far as using one shape to carve up the other one, and that split is simply using a flat plane with no thickness to slice an object. So uh, we can come something very similar to that. Um, okay, so I hope you found this useful. Uh, again, leave any comments and please enjoy the rest of your day.